An important discussion continuing today. Indiana's red flag law been in the news a lot since last week's deadly mass shooting at the FedEx ground facility here in Indy. The law allows police or courts to seize guns from people who may commit violent acts. It was not pursued against the FedEx shooter in this case after IMPD confiscated a firearm from him in March 2020. And that's really, you know, a piece that's up to, for debate right now. The law is meant to prevent people from buying or possessing a firearm if they're found to be an imminent risk to themselves or others. Before she retired from Congress, Indiana Representative Susan Brooks actually introduced a federal red flag bill on Capitol Hill, but it never passed. Congresswoman Brooks has joined me live now from Carmel in her home to discuss the need for red flag laws on a national level. So good to see you. Good morning to you. Good to see you as well. Good now, to be here. Absolutely. Uh, I know that you'd rather be with us talking about something else, but this is something important and it meant a lot to you. Can you tell us a little bit about why you think this failed and then why you think we need it so much right now on this national level? I was so proud that Indiana was one of the first states in the country back in 2005 to pass a red flag law. And um, while red flag laws are not the answer to all of the problems, it is an incredibly important tool for law enforcement and for prosecutors and for families who are dealing with those with serious mental illness. Um, so I introduced this bill in May of 18, along with Representative Ted Deutsch, who represented Parkland, Florida, after that shooting, and actually it was before our Noblesville shooting in mm. 18. But it was to incentivize other states around the country to adopt their own version of a red flag law. And we had had a red flag law in the book since 05. It had been used hundreds of times. I had talked with the Indianapolis Metropolitan Police Department about how they had used it, how we could improve it in the federal law. And so we introduced that bill, but it really didn't go anywhere in Congress. Yeah, let's talk about improving it here even locally, because we're watching this debate locally with our prosecutor in Marion County versus the police department talking about, um, you know, these this two week period of being able to kind of get a case to be able to take someone's gun while others are saying that's not enough time. You have an interesting, you know, more information on that. What do you have to say about that? Well, in our law, we introduced a 21 day period and even that might not be enough. But what we do know is that there needs to be, be better coordination between the mental health community and the criminal justice community. Um, I think Prosecutor Mears made some good points in that um, there was concern that there wouldn't be enough time, but yet FBI then followed up um, later with that family. and. I think we need to really examine how to make our law stronger. If we need more time, we need more time. If we need to put into the law that a person can't have the ability to obtain a firearm during that time, we should add that to the law. There are representatives, Representative Houchin, Representative Sh um, Donna Shibley have worked hard on that law to improve that law. So I would encourage the legislators to sit down with prosecutors. Prosecutors have used this law all around uh, the state. We haven't done a good job keeping track of a database of how that law has been used, but I know from talking to law enforcement, it has, is used repeatedly because they encounter mental health situations yeah. all the time with people. It does save lives. And in this case, it wasn't just a suicide allegation by, um, by this young man. It was suicide by cop. Yeah. And that should have raised an even higher level of concern. So taking the gun away and having that agreement with the family, while that was important, it wasn't enough. We only have 30 seconds left, and I, I wanted to be able to ask you why you think that more people aren't doing this. I mean, when you when you see Brandon Hole in, in, in our community, Republicans and the Democrats both agree that something more, they, they wanted something more to be able to be done in that case quickly. Why do you think it is that more states aren't adopting this, this kind of a law? Well, there is a significant concern as to uh, whether or not people might make allegations against people wrongfully mm -hmm. and use this as a tool to take their guns away from them, make false allegations. But that's where that individual has the opportunity to go into court and dispute that. What I learned from the police department, and I want to give a shout out to retired Sergeant Tammy Coons. She worked on this for many years. Often those individuals who had the guns taken away would not even go into court to show up and dispute it. Mm. They would actually say, you know, it was right for them to have taken my gun away. And so often they didn't even dispute that the gun should have been taken away. So I wish that had been used here, um, but I also appreciate that 14 days probably is not enough. Um, but yet we need to 
continue to challenge, let the court make that determination. Let the court extend the time. Let the court maybe make uh, a decision as to whether or not um, that individual um, and whether or not the prosecutor has enough information or not, or whether or not the prosecutor needs more time. And that's what I wish had happened here. Congresswoman Brooks, thank you so much for your insight. Well